move to push it back or duck to escape it. It slithered around his arms and neck like a sea of black worms pulsing through his veins, much stronger this time than the last. He screamed, but no sound came out of his mouth. It was going to take his life. He'd be gone, like his mum. Teo, Gabble shouted. His voice seemed far away. Dive into the water. Dive into the water and let Elian heal you. The water? Teo thought. I'm afraid of the water. But he wanted the pain to stop and he would do anything to make it go away. Where was the water? He couldn't see anything. Teo struggled to push through the thick, heavy fog, found the edge of the boat, grabbed the wood. He tugged his feet up onto the edge and used the last of his strength to dive in the water. With a mighty splash, Teo plunged headfirst into the cool water, forgetting to hold his nose and close his eyes as his dad had taught him to do. A shock of pain surged and then began to subside as his body adjusted to the cold water. See, that's, that's that. When he opened his eyes, he saw nothing but black. There was a sound, a boy laughing from somewhere deep in the lake, not laughing at him, but with him, as if to comfort him and tell him that everything was going to be okay. And somehow he knew, he just knew that the sound was his only hope and the only way to stop the pain. Elion? Teo cried into the black, help me. A dazzling light, golden and warm, erupted in the water. It flooded his sight and flowed through him head to toe. Another wave of light hit him. Teo inhaled, allowing the water to flood his mouth and his lungs. The light burned, but it didn't hurt. He could feel it, consuming all his fear and the pain that the fear had caused. Teo gagged as all the lies of the black fog detached from every part of his body. The fog flowed from his lips, immediately absorbed by the light. Teo willingly breathed in another lungful of light and was flooded with such incredible happiness and wonder that he began to laugh under the water. He could think again. He could see again. He could see better, more clearly. He could see the light and colour everywhere he looked. He could breathe again and he could breathe in the water. The wonder of that moment was almost more than he could bear. Teo wanted more, more of the sweet healing water. His anger and all his fears were melting away. Laughing with delight, he twisted and flipped in the deep water, free of his fear, free of the darkness of the water, breathing in the coloured light. Teo, Teo stopped his fun. He heard his name, but he couldn't see anyone. Teo, do you like what I've made for you? Teo spun, searching for the source of the voice. I love you, Teo. With that, another wave of light surged up from below Teo, swallowing him in warmth that bubbled through him. He had never felt such an overwhelming sensation of love and curiosity. Elia? The light pushed Teo up, forcing him to the surface. He didn't want to leave, but he trusted the force. The light pushed him out of the water and with a mighty crash, dumped him on a beach of brilliant white sand. He was no longer in the middle of the lake, but on land, breathing hard, mind buzzing, Teo stood to his feet. There were trees ahead, growing tall in a palette of colours, purples, reds, golds, blues, in shades he couldn't name. Bushy leaves of the same colours topped the trunks, dotted with fruits in a variety of shapes and sizes. A lion roared. Teo turned, unafraid. Judah! On top of the massive lion sat Michael, Gabriel and Stokes, his friends, wide smiles covering their faces. Teo smiled, allowing an unexplainable joy to wash over him. Elion. He heard Elion's voice. There was no doubt he heard it. He loves me, Teo whispered. He loves me, Teo shouted and jumped to his feet. 
Judah roared again and the roosh squealed in delight. Teo kicked the sand into the air, watching it fall like snow. Dripping wet and buzzing with a happiness he'd never felt before, he was free, free of himself, free of his fears. Will I meet Elion? Stokes nodded as if to say, go ahead, climb aboard. Judah rose, bowed his head and waited. Needing no further encouragement, Teo jumped on the lion's huge back, knocking the roosh onto the sand. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Stoke pumped his winged fist in the air. It's perfectly all right, son of Elion. A little fall means nothing to me. Teo's heart raced. He, Teo Dunnery, was riding a lion and he was not afraid. He hung tightly to Judah's mane as they sauntered along, trying to silence the questions racing through his brain. So then, who was Elion? What would he say when he got there? How would he act? It didn't matter. He was going to meet Elion. Chapter 9 Sitting atop Judah's powerful back with the roosh following behind in silent awe, Teo looked out to the lake, replaying his dive into the water over and over, not to understand what happened, but to recall the wonder and the joy that he felt. Judah slowed his pace. An old playground, like one Teo would have played in as a small child with a slide and swings, sat seemingly out of place on the sandy shore ahead of them. Next to the playground stood a boy. He was a bit taller than Teo and he wore a simple tunic. Even from this distance, Teo could see his brilliant blue eyes inviting him to come closer, as if they'd been friends forever and were finally meeting up again. The roosh swooped past him and flew up to the boy. Gabble nearly tripped as he landed, wrapping the large, his large wings around the boy's legs. Michael took the boy's hand and lowered his head respectfully. See, that's the lion coming up to them. And there's the boy over there with the swing set. Stokes approached the boy timidly. He bowed before the boy, keeping his head low. The boy leaned down and kissed the top of Stokes' head. He placed his hand under the small rooster's chin, lifting it. Smiling, he wiped the tear, slipping down the Stokes' eye. The young rooster threw his wings around the boy, who nodded at him. Hello, Stokes. So good to meet you. Stokes grinned from ear to ear, trembling with excitement. Then he jumped up on the slide and slid down, joined quickly by Gabble and Michael. It was strange to see the wise one, Michael, so childlike here. But seeing them flutter and hop around the swing and slide somehow made perfect sense. They were at home. Teo slipped off Judah and walked onto the playground, looking at the boy. He was certain he'd seen those blue eyes before. Who was he? But he knew this boy was going to take him to Elion. Maybe this was Elion's son. The boy's lips spread into a slight smile. He gestured his head to the right and headed up the beach. Teo followed immediately, picking up his pace until he was inches from the boy's back. He wanted the boy to run, to move faster. Excitement welled inside of him. He was going to meet Elion. The boy walked in silence as the sounds of the roosh faded behind them. Teo faithfully followed, not knowing how to voice what he wanted to say. They were on the beach, but the terrain had changed from vast plain of sand to rolling mounds. Finally, the boy stopped. Teo scanned the beach. Where was Elian? The air was perfectly still, not a sound, but the gentle lapping of water could be heard. Something's about to happen. I can feel it. Can I tell you a story? The boy asked, turning to Teo. He swallowed. Okay. The boy smiled, daring. I call it show and tell. With that, he waved his hand over the sandy beach. Teo jumped back as the sand all around them floated off the ground and swirled through the air. It clumped together, bending and twisting, until Teo could clearly see its form. A lion. But it wasn't an image or a sculpture of a lion. It was totally real and alive. How... The word stuck in his throat. 
As if to respond, the lion shook its mane and roared. Sand blew from its mouth. Teo backed away from the beast in awe. Lions are powerful and strong, said the boy, walking over to the lion and brushing his hand through its sandy mane. The lion rubbed against the boy, pleased. The boy looked at Teo. Imagine for our story that this lion is Elion. Can you do that? Teo nodded. Yes, I think so. Now imagine that that, the boy point, pointed to a dune 50 foot away. The sand swirled on the mound and a small black hyena, nearly two foot tall, sprang to life. That is the enemy of Elion. The hyena charged at the lion, issuing a high-pitched cackle, but then it stopped 30 feet away and crouched, snarling. Teo's heart hammered in his chest. Let's call the enemy of Elion evil, the boy said. So, the hyena is evil. Do you understand? Teo nodded, still stunned by what he'd seen. Tell me, the boy said, can the hyena hurt the lion? Teo thought for a minute, studying the two animals. He learned in science that even though hyenas are much smaller, they are the lion's worst enemies because they're fast, they have sharp teeth, and they attack in a pack. Yes, Teo said, if there are lots of them, they could easily take a lion down. More hyenas suddenly formed out of the sand until there was a pack of eight or nine. Eight or nine. They ran forward and attacked the lion. The lion fought back, but in the end he fell to the ground and sank back into the sand. Satisfied by their kill, the hyenas retreated to the dune and faced them, waiting. But Elion is much bigger than this lion, the boy said. So let's make the lion bigger. Let's make him as big as this whole beach. The lion appeared again, but this time it towered over Teo and the boy. He shook his mane, flinging a shower of sand down on Teo. Incredible. Now, said the boy, can the hyenas hurt the lion? Yes, they can. They could bite at his heels maybe, not kill him, but definitely hurt him. Once again, the sand played out Teo's response. The hyenas raced around the lion and bit at his ankles until the great lion fell to the sand, crying out in pain. No! Teo hated seeing the lion in pain. The hyenas rushed back to the dunes and took their place again. But Elion is much, much bigger even than the lion we saw. He's in infinite. Infinite? More powerful than anything you can imagine. So what if we make the lion as big as the world? What if we make it as big as all the stars and the whole universe? As the boy said this, the sand pulled from underneath Teo's feet. It spread and it widened, consuming the sky until suddenly Teo found himself surrounded by planets and stars. It was as if he was inside the lion, a lion as big as the universe. Teo reached out and tried to touch the stars as they moved and danced around him. The boy stood in front of him, watching, sharing Teo's wonderment. Now, can these hyenas hurt the lion? Teo gasped. Where are they? The boy pointed to a tiny planet in the far distance. Right where they were. They're not infinite, so they're still the same size as before. Teo blinked, lost in wonder. Somewhere on that tiny planet, on a beach too small for Teo to see, was a pack of hyenas. They might just as well be a speck of dust compared to the lion. Can they hurt the lion now? The boy asked. No, Teo whispered. Never. Could the hyena even bother or upset the lion? No. He didn't need to answer because the answer was so obvious. Never. The hyenas, which represented everything that was against Elion, could never bother or upset him. How could a speck of dust threaten the lion? It was impossible. Everything around Teo stopped as this realisation fell into his mind. <laughs>